Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you all. Good evening. Good evening. Hope, everyone, hope everyone's doing well. Um, we've got some more folks joining us here. So um, why don't we give folks another minute or so? <clears throat> So it's really good to see everyone. Um, I hope everyone's surviving the pandemic and you know beginning to enjoy some spring sunshine, a little warmer weather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> although, exactly. although Aaron, Aaron Healy is our guest author, and Aaron lives on Colorado. And mm. I, uh, I did an interview earlier today with Philip Yancey, and he told me he lives in Colorado also. He said it's going to snow out there. Yeah, the Thursday. Okay. More snow, more snow coming. Which is like, I had enough of that already <laughs> this year. But, you know, he said, well, it's April in Colorado. You know, that's that's the thing. So yeah, it, it snowed as late as Father's Day here since I've been here anyway. Well, thanks. Um, you know, I grew up in Illinois, kind of north central Illinois. And, um, my stepmother told me she remembered it snowing on 4th of July one day. Wow. You know, so it's like, okay. <laughs> I don't really want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, Aaron, especially thank you for joining us. Um, I would like everyone to kind of spend a minute to do a brief introduction of, you know, kind of who they are, where they're at in their writing journey. And, and Aaron, maybe you can start us off. Oh, sure. Um, I'm a novelist who hasn't written a novel for a few years. Um, I've written 10, but I'm my day job is as an editor and a writing coach. I've been doing that for 30 years. So um, that has consumed my time these days. And uh, yeah, I've been really busy during the pandemic. People decided they had more time and weren't spending money on vacations. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's been good for me business-wise, uh, which has been been fun. So it's good to meet you all. I'm glad you came. Yes, well, it's really great to have you here with us, Erin. Uh, I've always had a huge amount of respect for your work. So oh, thank you. Um, love to collaborate with you. Thank you. So let's just kind of go down the list. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Norman, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I am a Anglican priest up here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and. Uh, where we also sometimes get snow every month of the year. <laughs> and uh, so my writing mainly uh, focuses around articles and blogs. I, I write articles for the, the national church kind of blog arm, but then also for a couple online um, publication sites and would love to transition into, um, into a book at some point, but don't really know exactly what that means. So. Right now, I'm just really enjoying kind of the frequency of um, scheduled articles that I'm needing to, to put out there often um, and interested in what possibly writing coach can do for me to get me to that next stage of my writing. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Hi, everyone. My name is Peggy Turpin. I'm in New Jersey, um, Southern Jersey. Um, I'm not a writer. I guess I am <laughs> an as aspiring writer. Um, I'm on the call because um, God has commissioned me to write a book um, about you know my my life, and I'm struggling writing the book. And so I I I I learned about your your um, your ministry through. My seminary, um, you, you came to my school for a number of years to, to do the, um, you know, do workshops there. And so I just started to follow and um, this, I found this in my, in one of the emails that I had gotten. And I said, well, I think this would be a good way for me to jump in. And I see that you are inspiring spiritual writers. So my book is a spiritual book. And I figured this is a good, you know, this would be a good venue for me to be on uh, with like-minded people who will understand some of the things that I, I, you know, I'm trying to do. And, you know, 
um, as I said, being being called by God to write a book concerning some things that um, have taken place in my life. So thank you. Thank you for making this available. And I'm expecting to be enriched. Excellent. Well, it's really great to have you join us, Peggy. I live in central New Jersey near Freehold, so uh, we're oh, okay. not that far apart. <laughs> okay. And matter of fact, I said southern, but it is central because I'm I'm in Monroe Township. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Almost yeah, next about, door. Not too far from you. Yes. Right, right, right. So which seminary did you go to? Uh, New Brunswick Theological. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Um, their new building there is just wonderful. And yes, we had a yes. very first publishing color conference there, so it was just awesome. Yes. Good, thank you. So thank hi, you. Jan. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Wonderful. Good. So I'm Jan Rivero, I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, I am uh, working on a couple different things. Right now I'm, I'm working really hard on a particular uh, picture book for children. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a couple other ideas for those, uh, for that genre. Uh, but I also, um, like Peggy, have this kind of claim on my life to get a, um, a, a memoir out about um, my spiritual journey uh, from wow. trauma to trust. So um, I, I was really gung ho on this for about six months and then <laughs> I hit a wall. And so the idea of, of, of uh, entertaining the possibility of a coach really appealed to me. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say to us, Erin. Great, thanks, Jen. Excellent. Thanks, yes. Anne. Thanks, Kelly. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kelly Gammon. I live in Indiana, central Indiana. Um, I, when I was, uh, I'm grateful that Peggy, you described yourself as an aspiring writer, because I feel like that is definitely, I'm, I am definitely in the aspiring stage. Um, very, very early in the beginning of whatever my journey may look like. Um, yes. And at this point, I just, I um, am trying to expose myself to as many different opportunities as possible. And every opportunity of Brian's that I've participated in has been very beneficial. And I've been trying to make some of the um, Tuesday night calls. And so I was fortunate to be able to make it this evening. So. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's great to have you join us, Kelly. Thank you. Refried bean. Hey there. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Brian. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah. It's good to see you guys. Uh, my pen name is Refried Bean, and I e published a bunch of um, poetry and stories. And um, Brian, this is exciting. I, um, I just decided to self-publish on Amazon for paperbacks, yeah. and I got some of them in the mail, and they're awesome. I'm so happy. And um, I'm not trying to distract, but I wanted to kind of you guys mind if I show you one that came in? Excellent. Like a little book. Nice. Oh, isn't the print quality just wonderful? Yeah, I can't believe it. And the prices are like normal book prices. And it's just amazing. So I'm excited. And I learned that from the last conference, Brian. So thanks. Oh, and, good. I'm really glad that it turned out so well. Yeah, that's all. Excellent. <laughs> thanks, Sarah. Hey, Sherry, how are you doing? Hi, everyone. I'm doing very well. Glad to be here. Um, I'm an aspiring um, children's picture book writer. Um, and right now I'm just kind of um, doing lots of workshops and just really trying to learn and hone in on the craft of writing. Um, I'm taking a class. I've missed you guys on Tuesdays, but my class meets on Tuesday nights. So. Uh, Having a good time. I'm looking forward to the conference next week and for the children's um, book conference coming up. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, we're having a children's book conference in May. And we did the first one that I've ever done last um, September. And it was just so much fun. The writers were all so incredibly supportive of each other and um, just loved it. So I'm really looking forward to that again. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us, Sherry. Uh, so next up is Shar. Shar, are you there? Sure am. Hey, how are you? Good. It's uh, my turn to cook supper and it's right at the supper hour. <laughs> so I had my onion glasses on and I, I didn't think anyone needed to see that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm forced to multitask here. Um, um, 
Yeah, I, I would, I would say I'm a writer. I don't know if anyone else would because I'm not really in the mar public market yet, but I've done a ton of writing informally. And so I've, um, I've, I've written Sunday school curriculum and I've, I've, I've done a lot of, um, I've got children's books that I've written. I'm working on a novel, but, but nothing's been published. And so there's always this, um, insecurity of is, is what I'm writing good enough? Um, is this, it, what next? How do I, how do I, how do I find out how do I get, how do I get it out there? And so I've been dabbling in um, sending stuff out to publishers more this year, um, as well as the novel. And um, yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at in my journey and definitely in, intrigued by the idea of a writing coach. So excited. <laughs> good, good. Well, thanks for joining us, Shar. And uh, Patrice, I'm, I'm going to go you. off again, uh, just while I do a little bit of more meal prep and then I'm <laughs> here soon. No problem. <laughs> hey, Patrice. Um, hi, how are you all? Hi, Patrice, Patrice. Patrice Gerardo. Um, I've been writing in some way, shape or form since sixth grade, um, mainly in communications. I'm writing for about 20 years and um, so I um, decided last year to go down the route of self-publishing. But with that, um, I realized that I don't have a, a, a editor hounding me <laughs> to get the work done. So I did, con I literally right before Brian sent, Brian sent out this email, I was looking for a book coach for myself. I mean, I do some writing coaching for people mainly in the academy, like academic writing. Um, so I definitely want to see how, how, how that will help me reach my self-publishing goals. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Aaron, it sounds like a lot of the folks are really interested in finding out about coaching. Cool. Did you kind of yeah. give us an overview of what different forms that can take? Sure. And, um, Wow, what a great group of people. My, my very first piece of coaching advice to all of you would be, you don't have to consider yourself aspiring. You are writers, and you get to embrace that in whatever form it takes. I don't think pu getting published is necessarily, um, I don't know why that's the criteria we use to define whether we're writers or not, but Anyway, the fact that you are in the thick of the discipline and the practice of it makes you a writer. So great, I'm glad you all are doing that. Um, so in short, coaching, a coaching relationship is a part a one-on-one -on -one partnership with um, a professional who is going to help you meet your goals. That's very general. You can kind of think of it like a fitness coach. Um, a fitness coach might have somebody come to them and say, well, hey, I want to lose weight or, hey, I want to gain muscle mass or, hey, I need help getting trained for this competition or this event or something. So your goals determine what the coaching relationship is about. And it's largely dictated by you and what you're trying to do. So, you know, you're not necessarily going to go, well, I'm going to hire a coach and it's not like signing up for a course where someone's going to, you know, teach you um, a, a curriculum necessarily. Um, the first question I always ask anybody who's interested in uh, coaching with me is, well, what are, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? And we try to define that as specifically as we can, because the more specific you are, about what you want to accomplish, the better help you're going to get from your goal. So clients who come to me have varying goals. Um, I have some who they're trying to finish their first draft. They just can't get to the end and they, they want to have it done by a certain time. Um, and they just really want a regular meeting with somebody to check in and make sure they're doing the task. I have some who are trying to work on revising a novel. Um, something I should talk about is the difference between editing and coaching, because there is a little bit of overlap between the two. So if you take some work that you've done and you take it to an editor, 
what you're likely to get back is um, some input on what's working, what's not working, maybe some ideas on how to fix it. And then the editor will sort of turn you loose to do the work. If you're working with an editor in a publishing house or at a magazine, you might get a little more direction and coaching about how to bring it back. But editors don't necessarily walk with you through the process of getting from A to B to C. Mm. And a coach will, will do that for you. Um, I'd be interested, I know some of you have said what your goals are. Um, you know, Kyle, you talked about going from articles and blogging to a longer form. Um, some of your, your goals are to, to get published. Um, does anybody, like, if you were looking for a coach, what would you ask for? What would you say, here's what I would hope a coach could give me? Hmm. It's hard to know. Yeah, Patrice, go ahead. Yeah. Um, sorry for coming in and out. I'm trying to eat dinner and not look That's bad fine. doing it. But um, I... I have written one memoir and I would need help like making sure that it's ready for publication, yeah. self-publication. Yeah. And I have a strong outline for a second memoir. And so I would need help with accountability. When, okay. I, when I wrote the first memoir was for an MFA program. So I yeah. had Perfect, the professor saying, where's your next chapter? Where's your next? Yeah, that's good. Um, the deadline. Yeah. And then just confidence building, you know, yeah. um, just realizing that maybe I won't hit a best-selling list. I may never get up, mm -hmm. get picked up by a traditional publisher, but just confidence and putting my work out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So having that second set of eyes, yeah, gives you a lot more confidence and being a self-published person. That's um, that's a, that brings up another really good distinction between a, an editor and a coach. Is an editor is typically going to be really focused on the work, on the product, on what you're writing, um, and hopefully a coach will be a little bit well as focused on the work, but a little more focused on you too and identifying what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, how can you operate in your writing from a place of strength, um, and then how can we elevate your weaknesses and, and bring those up so that ideally you'll be in a coaching relationship where you feel like you have an ally and not somebody who's just a taskmaster. Um, I, I, Char mentioned, I saw her comment come up that she would like, you know, feedback on her writing. Um, you can get that level of feedback from a writer's group or from, you can hire a professional editor to do an edit of your work and you can get that level of feedback. Um, the coaching might come later when you've actually identified what it is you need to do with the work if you don't know where to take it. So, you know, Patrice, in the example of your memoir, um, I have a client who brought a memoir to me and she hired me just to give her a critique of the manuscript. And um, it was unwieldy. It was twice as long as a published memoir typically is. She didn't have a focus. She wasn't sure. She was just writing down all these events of her life. So she didn't quite have her theme in place. And I addressed all those things in a memo to her. And we talked on the phone. We had, you know, there's consultation. Um, and I identified all the things that she really needed to do to bring this manuscript into a publishable condition. And she said, great, that sounds good. I have no idea what to do. I have no idea how to do it. And so we entered a coaching relationship after that editorial process, whereby I could really just to show up with her once or twice a month as she's writing and say, you're on the right track. No, you veered far off the track. Let's bring you back. And so it's just, it's more of a guiding sort of, of relationship that takes place after that. Um, of course, you know, one of the biggest 
obstacles to hiring a coach's expense. Um, because it's private, because it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's very expensive. Um, if you've got the money for it, that's no problem. But when you're working on book length manuscripts in particular, you know, um, I usually have six months um, six month coaching relationships for writers who are working on novels, six months can usually give us time to go through the book one time, again, depending on what their goals are. Um, but I charge $100 per hour for coaching. I have a colleague who charges $500 per hour for coaching. Um, so, I mean, it's a huge range. And, um, and, and, and it's just costly. So one of the things I do encourage people to do when they're trying to decide whether they should spend the money on one or not is to exhaust all of your other resources for determining what you need. Again, going back to that, what is my goal? That, that's going to help you get the most out of your money. You can be most efficient with your coaching process. Um, and you're gonna do that by doing exactly what you're doing right now. You're joining the Tuesday Writers Groups. You're probably reading books on your craft. You're probably going to writers workshops. Um, there are many, many options that you can have that don't cost $100 per hour um, to get a level of feedback until you can determine what you need. And one of the biggest clues to what you need is you will notice the longer you do this and the more you practice your writing that you'll get various levels of feedback from people that you show your writing to and at some point you're going to notice the feedback begins to converge on similar themes um, where you know somebody will say well I don't really understand what you're trying to say or um, I was really interested in what you wrote until this point, and then you lost me. I don't understand, you know, the organization's not working, or I don't like the characters in your story, or it's too long, you need to make it shorter. Whatever it is, at some point, you will begin to get feedback that overlaps, and, and that feedback is what's worth paying attention to, because you'll know as a writer that you're going to you could show your stuff to 10 different people and get 10 different responses. <laughs> so what do you do with all that? Well, you kind of have to take it at face value, but keep getting more feedback as you do it. It will begin to reveal where your trouble spots are. So um, the more time you spend on those, I always feel the most guilty when people come to me for advice I know they could have gotten in a $15 book. <laughs> um, I think I'm taking money off, <laughs> off your table and you could have gone and borrowed this book from your library and learned what I'm going to teach you to get us to the starting point. So really exhaust every option that you have so that you know what you need. So it seems, Aaron, that when a writer is looking for a coach, they should find someone who's really experienced in all the different matters. aspects yeah. of this yeah. because to be a good coach you're going to have to you know pitch in here for one person and pitch in there for another person and it may look completely different in terms of yes. the model the relationship model the actual tactical work that you're yes. doing yes Absolutely. Um, experience is important. I'd encourage you, you know, get get word of mouth from other writers, you know, who are working with coaches, find out who they're working with. Um, when you interview a coach, try to find out what their specialty is. So, for example, if you came to me and said, um, I've been I've been pitching my model to, you know, publishers and agents, and they're all telling me this is a really common one it's too long. <laughs> and I look at it and it's 150,000 word manuscript. Yes, it is too long. I don't know how to make it shorter. And so, okay, I can help you make it shorter. <laughs> or um, some people are telling me that I don't know how to use point of view and I don't get it. I don't get point of view. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can do storytelling strategy. I can help with memoir. I can help with structure, with organization. If you came to me and said, my goal is to sell this book to an agent, I would say, 
that's not my specialty. Um, marketing and selling the book is a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. Let me get you to somebody who can do that for you. So don't, again, it just, I think if you only took one thing away from this, it's that when you hire a coach, know what you want to get out of it by the time you're done. And, and also another thing that that helps you do is you can go to a coach and say, I can afford six hours of your time. In six hours over how long a period of time, I wanna get from here to here. Can you, can you help me get there in six hours? And so you can maintain some control over the process. And I think you'll, you'll you know, when you interview people, um, you'll get a sense for whether they're gonna be a good fit for you or not. Um, hopefully they can refer you to clients that you can talk to, or they will have some sort of endorsements that you can look at. Endorsements are funny, because of course, they're only going to show you endorsements of people who think they're wonderful. So um, <laughs> that's not as good as a word of mouth recommendation. But yeah, don't, don't be afraid to have high expectations. So uh, Kyle, go ahead. So how would, you know, like, so right now I don't have a manuscript and I'm not necessarily yeah. right now working at a manuscript. I do these one-off pieces. And so, and eventually I'm going to be moving there, but I'm also a little bit more now in terms of audience creation, trying to cultivate, a, I guess, a name in some sense. So how would a, yeah. a writer's coach help with one-off pieces? Like you're not working with one solitary thing. Yeah. Sure. No, but you can. You can say, for example, I write articles, and so, and I write on this schedule. Um, I would like to have somebody that I can go to on a regular basis to say I'm on track. And by the way, while we're talking about this, here's where I'm trying to go. In one year, I want to be over here. Can you help me do that? So, in in my when I talk about an editorial philosophy, like what does an editor do? What are you about? My definition of that is it's my job to help you bridge the gap between your writing, what's in your head and on the paper, and your reader. There's this big chasm there and a lot of stuff falls through sometimes. So my job is to be that bridge if I can be. So in your situation, Kyle, if you knew exactly I'm trying to reach out to this type of reader, I want to grow my platform in this direction, and I'm going to do that by writing this many articles, you can definitely develop um, a coaching relationship with somebody who's available. So um, one of the things that you'll need to do in uh, working with a coach is, is ask them, you know, what is my accessibility to you? How often can I contact you? How much are you willing to read? Like for me, because I have a regular workload of full-length book manuscripts that I'm working on, I can't have coaching clients sending me stuff every day to read. And so for me, um, I will read up to 10,000 words that you have written once every two weeks. And that for me is just kind of a standard baseline starting point. It works for most of the clients I work with because they're also working on book projects. Um, and then we go from there. They can meet less frequently. Um, we can talk on the phone certain times or we, you just customize it. But Kyle, did that answer your question? Okay. So, so what about, you know, kind of what I would consider to be earlier stage to all of this, Aaron, where a person's really just trying to figure out, you know, what direction should I go in? What should I focus on? I don't have a manuscript, but I have this call to write. How, yeah. how do you help someone at that stage? Um, and yeah, in that stage, you know, again, there, there's part of the answer to that question is finding the right person. So in, in that situation, you're kind of looking for um, not a life coach per se, but someone that can help you with the vision casting. Um, I've been dabbling in this, or, or I've got my feet in you know, 12 different places and I need to focus and I don't know how to focus. Gosh, one hour with somebody who works in the industry who can ask you the right questions could maybe help you begin to develop 
say a mission statement. That's just another goal that you could take to a coach and say, I am trying to focus my efforts. I need somebody to help me write a mission statement and develop a plan to get this discipline off the ground. Um, you can find people who do that. Um, it is hard to find the right people. You might have to go through several, um, but they, they do exist. You just have to be really specific about what you are asking for. So, you know, I know you mentioned earlier that the best way to find a good writing coach is word of mouth. And I totally yeah, believe yeah. that. It's like, you yeah. know, talk to other authors, see who they've worked with, yeah. see what they've experienced, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But beyond that, I mean, yeah. are there any good reference points? I mean, I don't, I don't want to ask you for a director of writing coaches because I just know that's, no, I wish there were one, right? We could, but, but what I can tell you is that most freelance editors also do coaching because it's a very natural extension of what we do as editors um, and, and because there is overlap. So you could go to almost any freelance editor and say, do you provide one-on-one -on -one coaching beyond a specific writing project or alongside? And just ask. Also, um, you might be surprised agents also provide coaching services and agents are fabulous coaches, um, especially if you are asking questions not. So editors are really good if your primary questions are about how to develop your written work. Agents are where I would go to look for a coach if you're trying to figure out how to position yourself in the marketplace, how to establish, like Brian, you do coaching, you know, as you're helping authors develop their platforms. Um, agents are really good with industry insider knowledge about what is currently going on and how are you going to respond as a writer to immediate trends and so on. So agents and editors are probably the first place I would, I would look at. And they're in directories. So either you can Google us, um, freelance editors, or and you're looking, when you're looking for editors, you are looking for content editors or developmental editors. Um, you're, you're not looking necessarily for copy editors and proofreaders unless your need is to develop your mechanical writing skills. Some people need help with that. Um, and so if you are a copy editor, it could probably help teach you that. But otherwise, you're looking for developmental or content editors. Um, what about going to an author? You know, somebody who you well, really sure. respect. Does that work much? Do you know? Or Well, I know there, there are some who do it. Probably fewer because most authors are really focusing on, you know, their own careers. Um, but, you know, as you all know, this isn't, this isn't a blockbuster money-making job. And we're all looking for additional revenue streams. And there are authors who are very well-versed. Um, who can do coaching for you. My advice about working with an author, though, is that when you look for an author to coach you, you find one who is either writing the same kind of book you are trying to write. If you're trying to get coaching in your memoir, find a memoir writer. If you're writing a romance novel, don't necessarily go to Stephen King to you know, <laughs> coach you in the genre. No, now Stephen King, he's a bad example. He could coach any author in anything. But you know, you get my, you get my point. Um, go to a writer who is writing something like you because they'll, and, and try to find people who are ahead of you in your, in your work. Um, when you're joining a writer's group, Try to join a writer's group in which the other writers who are in your group are more advanced than you are. That's how you'll grow. Um, so yeah, just look for people who are a little bit farther down the path that you yourself are on and that can work too. And back to Aaron's previous point about approaching developmental, developmental editors for this. Um, on the Writing for Your Life website under the Writer Services page, which is where, you know, we have Aaron and several other really high quality um, developmental editors. Um, if you're interested in asking them, in any of them, if, if they might be able to be a coach for you, um, feel free to do that. Just ask me 
to ask them, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and see if, if they'd be available to help you. Because because Aaron's right. Even sometimes when people don't advertise, you know, or say that they do mm-hmm. coaching, many times they they will do on a you know one on one or approach approachable kind of a basis. Yeah. So Sherry, you have a question. Go ahead. Yes. What's the difference between a mentor and a coach? Hmm. I don't know. I, d- I don't think there is a significant difference. That could probably just be a terminology. Um, well, don't you think a mentor means for free and a coach means you pay for it? Oh, I never thought about that. It could be. Um, that's funny that you say that. I have an editor that I'm mentoring um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's not paying me to mentor him, but that's the way I perceive those terms. That's, right. that's a generalization. Yeah. It's like the difference between PR and advertising. Right, right. right. Yeah. Exactly. That's the way yeah, I perceive it. But I mean, again, that's just. I'll know. defer to Brian on that. because, uh, <laughs> and, and well, there's a, good, there's a good point there, which is ask. If somebody says, well, I'll mentor you, <laughs> just get clarity on what that means. Um, yeah, if you, can, if you can find somebody to mentor you, by all means, you know, take advantage of that. I mean, so many authors have got writers groups, you know, peer to peer groups that they utilize heavily. And everyone has told me how valuable those are. They can be really valuable. And the value of writers groups is not going to be in the feedback you get on your own work. The value of a writers group is going to be what you learn by critiquing the work of other people. Hmm. And so, um, yeah, if you if you can join a writers group, that's a fantastic way to learn indirectly. Uh, what to do and what not to do. Good, good. Um, we had a couple of folks join us uh, late. Beth, would you like to like introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about where you're at on your writing journey? Hello, everyone. I guess I'm the only Beth in here, so I would be happy to. I have to find the unmute button. Um, you know, I guess I am at the, I'm certainly at the very beginning. I've been to a couple of writers conferences, but that's been over the years and I am just getting ready to, um, complete my employment as a college professor, having been 18 years at this particular institution as a tenured professor of business administration. So I'm not, Thank you, Erin. I appreciate that. It's, it's a hard, hard decision to make, but kind of ready to do something different. So um, I'm hoping to, uh, to embark in this area. And I've got a few ideas, but sort of as Kyle was mentioning, um, you know, I have a lot of different things. So I need to begin to figure out um, exactly what I will do after I catch my breath and finish this semester <laughs> and move forward. Good, good. Well, thanks yeah. for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Hi there. You want to tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I am working on a book. It's about the power of God to change lives. And I have completed a manuscript and I'm working on the editing process. So just um, exploring different opportunities to connect with others as I work on that process. Wonderful. Thank you. And Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Hi. I thought I'd sneak in. I didn't know you were going to put me on the spot. Sorry. (laughs) Um, Just before before you got on, we just asked everybody to go around and just say a couple of words about, you know, what they're up to. Yeah. Um, I retired from Christian education in 2017. I have one self-published book that has to do with um, sort of meditations and prayer, and I'm trying to figure out what to do next. And Shirley is also an excellent photographer, so uh, she and I have been uh, collaborating on some uh, photographs for Compassionate Christianity, which is great. Oh, wonderful. So what other questions do folks have for Aaron? What else would you like to talk about? Hey, Brian, did Char go? Did Char introduce herself? Yeah. She did. Okay, I didn't remember.
So what else? How could you on? forget? How could you forget the onion glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what else would folks like to talk about? Well, this is Beth, and I did sort of have a question based on a couple of comments that Aaron had made. Just um, are there standards in terms of number of words that we would expect in a, in a book or a, a, an article? Just sort of trying to get a handle of that measure of words. Oh, yes, there are industry standards. Um, the length of an article really is determined by the publication you're writing for. And so, you know, that's going to vary pretty widely. Um, Kyle could probably speak to this better than I could, but in my experience, you know, the, the attention span of readers is shorter and shorter and shorter. And when I started, it's like, don't write an article that's longer than a dollar bill. Your column length can't be longer than a dollar bill. Um, now, now we've all been US Todayified, USA Todayified. Um, when it comes to, well, and then the flip side of that is that now that publications are moving online, articles have space to get longer. They're not constricted by the printed page. So mm -hmm. that's why there's a huge variance in the length of, of articles. And I would just say, always check the writer's guidelines for any publication you're trying to write for. Um, when it comes to books, nonfiction books are going to range usually 45 to 60,000 words, depending on the topic and other books in that range. Memoirs are often a little bit longer, say 55 to 75,000 words. Um, novels typically range upward of 75 to 100,000 words. Science fiction and fantasy are longer. Okay. <laughs> um, but sort of the upper limit on a book for a debut novelist for any publisher is 120,000 words. You will not get an agent to look at a book that's longer than 120,000 words. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a magical number. It's a practical one that has to do mm -hmm. with the cost of printing and producing a book and getting a reader to be interested in it if they've got to charge a higher price for it. So mm -hmm. that's your upper limit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Can I, can I springboard off that, Erin? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the children's books I've written mm -hmm. is a long one. And, mm -hmm. and I've had trouble getting people to look at it, but it's yeah. not meant to be, a, uh, it's not meant to be a, a small children's book. I have a few that I read my son that are mm -hmm. longer. Um, any advice on that? What age group is it for? Um, it's funny. I would say, oh, my my son's three he'd probably listen to it over several days but um, at my previous church um the adult small group was reading it and discussing it so it was, okay. it was kind of, it, it's sort of a yeah it's a bit of an allegory of the divinity of christ and oh, okay sure so it, it kind of spans and so i don't really know how to yeah um, so how you pitch it matters, you know, if you're pitching it as a children's book, but it's really, you know, a book adults are, are going to read, and maybe they'll read it to their children, you might want to pitch it as an allegory, um, rather than a children's book. Um, how long is it? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah, it and reads so, as good. So publishers and editors always work in terms of word counts. And so when they say, how long is your book? And you say 200 pages. Well, like, no, nah, we, don't, we don't care how many pages it is. Um, we want to know how many words. So, so that's a really good thing to get familiar with, like where you are on the range. Um, you know, I think it's around 3,000. I think oh. it might be three. Okay. So what's interesting about the 3,000 word range is that that's, if this were a picture book, that'd be way too long. You know, a 32 page picture book, um, you're not gonna have a hundred words on every page. Um, if you were writing for say an early reader, like you would have to have language that was really, really simple to read. So it's all about reading level. Once you move up into that eight to 12 year old category, um, then the novels actually move up into the 25 to 35,000 word range. So it's way too short for that size so yeah you are sort of in a no man's land mm -hmm. of word count um and probably what i would recommend you do is see if you can go find in the bookstore spend a day at barnes and noble 
doing some research to see if you have, if you can find any books that are about the length of yours that are like yours in any way and try to figure out, try to analyze you know, what are they doing? Who are they pitching this book for? What does the book try to do? And see if you can find a place to orient yourself around something that has been published. And the reason for that is that then you can say to an agent or to a book house, I, there's a point of reference I can give you for the fact that there's a market for something like what I'm trying to do. Um, so that that could is be a really excellent thing. advice. That is just excellent advice. Because one of the things that, you know, all the, editors want to see is, is comps, right? Comparable books. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. If you ever write a book proposal, that will be something you have to do. You will have to demonstrate that there is a place in the bookstore for your book. And so you have to be able to, you know, come up with other books that are similar to yours in some fashion. Um, in a way that demonstrates there are people out there who will buy your book because there are people out there who've bought this book. I'm not asking you to go out on a limb and publish something that's never been published before. You can do that, but then you have to have a spectacular idea that truly nobody has ever done before. And uh, that's pretty rare. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's, that's just excellent advice, I think, Erin. Um, anyone, you know, that's got a vision you know of what they think they want to do and, and a link that they want to they need to do the kind of research you just described you see okay what else is out is there anything else out there what is it that's yeah. similar length and similar genre approach you know the whole nine yards yeah good good what else Go ahead, Kyle. So I have a question about, um, and, and I don't know if you can answer this or not, maybe Brian can answer this, but so like, I'm not doing, so I don't do novels and I don't do poems or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I do essentially articles on theology, the church and the Bible. Mm -hmm. So finding a writing group for that <laughs> is kind of really hard. So yes. do you yes. have any thoughts about like, how? I where do. do I start? Yeah. I do. And I knew somebody like you would be here tonight. So my answer to you is make, create one, create your own writer's group. This is, I'm sorry, side down. This is called writing alone and with others. And I hear that more than it, even, even writers who are writing novels or who are writing things that aren't that far off of center, you might live in a geographic area where you just, you don't know where the other writers are. You don't have a library that has writers groups in it or something. You can form your own group. This is a really great book that's a guide on how to do that. Okay. Um, and I think that's a that's a fantastic way to meet that need and just be proactive in meeting your own need. Um, now, for you, Kyle, you might actually consider forming a group of online writers. You know, any if 2020 showed us anything, it's that we can all jump on Zoom and sure. have meetings. So um, I don't think you're necessarily restricted to working. Um, in your own town, I, you know, that's a lovely option if it, if it works, but you guys are going to go to writers conferences, you're going to meet peers and colleagues and great, I love writers conferences, I'm a huge fan of them. Um, I got my career jump started because when I was in college, a friend sent me to a writers conference. And that's where I started. Um, and you want to look for ways to actively be keeping in touch with writers that you connect with, who you have that bond with. So don't be afraid to start your own. You do not have to be a professional or an industry insider to do that. Okay. Not at all. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, Kyle, I would think there'd be a lot of other pastors, you know, that would be. Probably. Absolutely. Yeah. I just didn't know where to kind of begin right so yeah. i'll definitely check yeah. out that book that you that you yeah. showed there i think um pat schneider is the author well the other thing too i mean you know for those of you who are not already a member join the writing for your life conference attendees um facebook group you know and 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 put a you know 
notice out there, a post out there and oh, say, hey, I'm go. looking to do this, this, and this. I'd like to form a writer's group or, you know, most okay. of the time after the conferences, I always have like a contact list. If anybody that attends the conference would like to have their name and email address in the contact list, I'll add it in there so that they can get in touch with other people that they've met, you know, through the conference. So, you know, sure. uh, obviously this community here, um, writing for your life, we've got a lot of pastors, pastors, retired pastors, you know, um, that are writing. And so I think you'd find some camaraderie there. Yeah. So we had a couple more folks join us. Terry, do you, one of the things we did when we first got started was just kind of share a little bit about kind of who we are and where we're at on our writing journey. Would you like to do that? Okay, I got a new laptop. Hi. I'm learning how to work it. I got a new laptop. I'm learning how to work it. Good. <laughs> My name is, is, is Therese Lindsay. They call me Miss Terry at church. And I'm in the process of weighing my options of retiring in June. And I got into genealogy. I was doing my family history. I got into genealogy and so much of the story is missing. So I just started writing things in a uh, imaginative form about my grandparents and my great grandparents and what they went through. And that started me writing mm -hmm. stories. Yeah. Well, I did write poems when I was in high school. I did write poems. Okay. Well, good. That sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise. How are you? Okay, I clicked the right button, yay. Hello, everybody. Yay. Hi, I'm Denise, and I've been following Mr. Elaine in writing for your life and publishing in color for about a year now. Was planning on going to a conference last year, but we all know how that ended up. Yes. Uh, and um, I write Christian nonfiction and children's books okay. that's what i'm focusing on right now mm -hmm. wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. well we have a before you came on we were talking about the children's book conference coming up in may yes and then obviously you know publishing colors coming up uh next week yeah mm -hmm. but uh hopefully in 2022 we'll be able to get back to doing some in-person conferences um, I think I'll still continue to do online conferences just because there's so many folks that, you know, can't easily attend an in-person conference. And uh, right. now that the whole world has gotten used to this, you know, Zoom forum and, and, mm -hmm. and they're more comfortable with it, um, it's proven to be a very effective way to do these things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll continue to do virtual conferences also when we um, we start our in-person conferences. So right now I'm shooting for like the spring of okay. 2022 to hope, okay. hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. do a couple of in-person conferences. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Aaron, any closing thoughts? Um, um, hi. Hey, Shar. <laughs> I had a question, but it's okay. I see we're getting oh, around. Go ahead, Char. We still have time. Oh, okay. I, I just wondered, um, like I know I know there's this the writing or the um the writing for your life website and stuff, but any other recommendations in in looking for an agent? I've been I online and you just search and search and it yeah spending hours and you still don't know what to do. And yeah. I'm kind of aimless in my search. So any recommendations? Yeah, um, are you familiar with the Christian Writers Market Guide? I've heard of it, yeah. yeah. So I would Google the Christian Writers Market Guide. Um, Steve Lobby re recently took over that publication, and if I have my story correct, which I haven't looked at it for a little bit yet, he has a version of that guide that is just agents. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
if I have time before we get off, I'll see if I can find that. But the Christian Writers Market Guide, it's an annual guide that's published. It is available online, I think, for a subscription fee. Um, and that's where I would start. And my guide with my caveat with the guide is that when you are searching for agents in a book, keep in mind that the information in the book will probably be out of date before the book is even published. So what you have to do is use a printed guide as your starting place, use it to go through and say, these are probably my best choices for an agent. And then one by one, you go to that agent's website for the most current information and hope they're updating their site, not some are better than others. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's right. That's, yeah, Christian Writers Martin got, and for you too, um, a lot of you, um, the Society of Children's Books Writers and Illustrators, you're familiar mm -hmm. with that organization? Mm -hmm. they they have some resources as well. Um, and the other one that I like personally for general market publishing is uh, the Writer's Digest. Oh, yeah. I used to get that all the time. Yeah. Writer's Digest also publishes an annual catalog of, of agents and publishers. Um, they are in some kind of transition. Somebody purchased the rights to publish that guide, and it's not back up and running yet. So keep checking mm -hmm. their website. But mm -hmm. when, they, when they publish, it is worth the monthly subscription, it's like $7 a month or something to subscribe. Subscribe mm -hmm. to it when you're actively doing your research. Mm -hmm. it, subscribe again sometime. And then you know you always have up-to-date information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah. So I kind of was looking back over my notes. I think we covered everything um, except, well, there were two more points that we didn't talk about. Um, directly. And one is, you know, when you're looking for a coach, one of the things that will help you is to take your work as far as you know how to take it on your own before, you know, you go to a coach or, or even an editor. Because um, again, you don't want to be hiring somebody to tell you to do what you already know you need to do. Um, you want to hire somebody either to tell you what you don't know, or to tell you how to do what you don't know how to do. So just always put in your time and don't say, you know, I didn't hear this from anybody, but, oh, I think I'll be a writer. I think I'll go hire a private coach. You will kind of probably wander around a bit if you approach it that way. Um, and then the, another thing um, is that when you hire a coach, just consider how much focused time you can give to the process. If you're willing to focus on um, for a period of time, say two months or six months or a year, um, you will get more out of the process than if you hire an, a, a coach or an editor and you only show up every three months or just as you have time to write and then you go talk to them again. Um, if you can develop a relationship with a coach that's, that's again concentrated, you will just get a lot more out of it. Um, Another reason that it helps is it helps your coach, like not have to remember, oh, what did we talk about six months ago, you know, or I saw the first three chapters of your book, and now I'm seeing the next three, and if there's a lot of time between that, uh, memories fade, and, and the advice just might not be as personal as you'd like it to be, so. It makes a lot of sense. That's it. Good, good. Well, Aaron, I really appreciate you uh, joining us tonight. You know, you're such a fount of experience and knowledge in this oh, space. Well, and, uh, I have a lot to learn myself. Thank you. Oh, well, no, I mean, you know, I have the utmost respect for your judgment on all of these things. So I'm really glad for you to be able to share that with uh, our audience tonight and, and all the folks that are going to see this after we record it. So uh, thank you so much. Great group. Thanks for having me. Wish you all the best. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. It was all, always great to see you. Appreciate you uh, joining us and uh, look forward to seeing you next month or uh, at one of the conferences. So Definitely. good night, everyone. Take care. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. -bye.